I'm Sarah Ann Reed, holistic dog trainer, animal communicator, and owner of Pack Dynamics. In this episode, I'll be having an intuitive chat with a pup named Bodie, a sweet black lab, and his family have a few questions for him. When I communicate intuitively, I will receive pictures and videos in my mind. If it's something emotional that they're feeling, I'll feel that emotion within myself. If it's something physical, I will feel the physical sensation in my body. And then they'll usually show me an image of their body in my mind and highlight the area that they're, they're experiencing that sensation. And it's like feeling the words that they're sharing with me. When I communicate with them, my eyes are closed, which allows me to see and feel and hear their messages more easily. And my left hand always comes up. I guess it's like picking up the phone to talk to them. Let's get started. <laughs> oh, Bodie is so cute. What a funny boy he is. Okay. <laughs> So uh, one of your comments when you sent you know, the questions he's saying is that you feel like Goose, your uh, previous pup who transitioned and crossed over Rainbow Bridge, is with Bodhi, helping to teach and guide him and also with you, with your family. And Bodhi's... He's so funny. He's saying, right on. He says, yeah, mom, you you knew Goose is with us. Um, and he's been teaching me a lot, he says. <laughs> uh, oh, okay. Okay. Huh. Okay. Before Bodhi incarnated into this lifetime, Goose was schooling him. Yeah. Goose is showing me an image of like a teacher's hat on his head and yeah, teaching little Bodhi all of the important things he needed to know to come into your family, to help you with life lessons, to be a quote unquote good boy, uh, settle in easily. Yes, and Bodhi's saying, my big brother, he, he's referring to him as his big brother yeah, uh, uh, is always helping me and guiding me. And now that Bodhi is in physical and he's with you and your family, Goose is doing most of the schooling when Bodhi is sleeping, when he's taking a nap, when he sleeps at nighttime. They hang out together. They have fun together. They play together. They go on romps together. Great adventures. And there's also <laughs> Goose is saying teaching moments in that experience for Bodhi too. Okay. Okay. Yes. So Bodhi is saying, you asked if we have known each other before. And we have just because we hung out together. Yeah, when we're both in spirit form, that's how we know each other. We're very familiar with each other. We're great, we're great buds, Bodhi says. Bodhi is really funny. Uh, okay. Where would you like to start, Bodhi? There's a few questions here. You want to start with your nails? Okay. Okay. So, Bodhi, your mom has shared that when she tries to um, to cut your nails, you don't like it at all, or it doesn't seem like you do because you're trying to, to kind of bite it. Yeah, and and stop the nail um, trimming from happening. Mm -hmm. I'm just double checking this question. 
Yeah. And also, yeah, also, um, <laughs> the brush, you're, you're biting at these things. And your mom doesn't understand this behavior. Why are you doing this? Okay. So Bodhi is saying, I don't like it. It, it what are you doing? And so he's trying to bite at the brush or the nail clippers to try to stop you. Um, uh, yeah. And he's showing me an image of his nails and he says, what's the big deal, mom? I know my dew claws are pretty long, but the rest of my nails are fine because of all the walking that we do. Yeah. He really, he's fine with having his paws touched, his feet touched, but you try to put the clippers there and he shows, he, he does everything he can to stop you from approaching his nails. Okay, how can we help you with this? Okay. If you can make it... Uh, um, a fun experience for me, Bodhi saying. Because really you only need to trim his dew claws, which is, you know, a lot less than having to do all of his nails. He's saying if one of you can be holding <laughs> uh, the peanut butter wand, let's call it that, um, a, a dedicated wooden spoon or spatula, that you use just for this and you smear some kind of nut butter on the spatula or wooden spoon and you're, one of you is holding up the spatula up here in front of his face and the other is just quickly coming in and um, just trying at first just trying to, uh, oh not quickly okay getting him used to I'm going to approach your dew claw with the clippers. I'm not even going to touch your dew claw at first, but I'm going to move my hand with the clippers in it towards your dew claw while you get to lick nut butter. Um, yeah. And it's really hard to do this by yourself. So it would be helpful if one of you is approaching the nail while, um, Another family member is holding, yeah, maybe dad's holding the spatula. He's saying, mom, you're approaching the nail. Okay. And at first you just get him used to, honey, every time you see the clippers, something great happens. You get this yummy nut butter. And until he's feeling comfortable with it and not grabbing her hand, which could take a few weeks. Yeah then you'll be able to slowly build up to touching it on his nail, not cutting, but just touching and eventually building up to actually clipping. Yeah. The dew claw. Yeah. And it's a, um, he's saying it's a weird pinching feeling, um, to have it actually cut. Um, so if you could, instead of cutting straight across, if you can cut at an angle on one side and then an angle on the other side to slowly work it back. Yeah, that would be more comfortable, but it, it just makes him flustered and nervous right now. That's why he's responding and reacting like that. Um, okay. Let me ask him about the brush. He's showing me the brush. It feels like the brush is, um, like the bristles are hard. He's saying they're really hard uh, for him. He's got, he feels very sensitive. Um, his body feels very sensitive. Yeah. He would like, if you could get a, a really soft bristled brush to just get him used to, the sensation of being brushed and again, using the, yeah, the designated nut butter dispenser, uh, 
and he only has this special nut butter on the spatula or wooden spoon when he's being brushed or when he has his nails, his dew claws trimmed. Yeah. And you just get him used to one swipe of the brush and he licks some nut butter and then you stop and you slowly build up to being able to brush him. You, you want to make it um, not a big deal at all. You're not sitting down to brush his whole body because that's too much for him. You're just getting him used to feeling comfortable with the brush touching him. But he's saying, please get a, a softer bristle brush. Okay, honey. And it's very important that your energy is nice and calm and grounded before you do either of these things. Because if you're in a rush or if you're worried about his behavior, if your energy is heightened or you're laughing while he tries to grab the brush or the clippers, his energy gets escalated and he'll do it more because then he thinks that it's a fun game that he's playing. Yeah. But, it, um, but for him, it isn't a game. It's a, it comes from a place of anxiety. It can feel his nerves like in his stomach. Yeah. Okay. So just taking tiny, tiny, tiny baby steps and not moving to the next stage until he's comfortable with the stage that you're on. It could take a while and that's okay. He says, we have all the time in the world. There's no rush. Yeah. And, and he also, when you file your nails, he gets very concerned about you as well. So make sure when you're filing your nails, just do it in a different room where he can't see you. Close the door so that he isn't a part of that because it does make him nervous. Oh, he's such a sensitive boy. He is so sensitive. Okay. And now he's showing me. <laughs> yeah. When you try to get him in your vehicle, he does not want to go in. Wow. He sh yeah, he's showing me backing up, he just backpedaling away from it, or he just sits and he turns into a rock. Like he makes himself as heavy as possible because he does not want to be picked up. Okay, honey. Why is it that you're uncomfortable getting in the vehicle? Okay. It's he okay. He he um he's showing me that it's the, it's the being picked up and put in that he struggles with. He, because his feet aren't on the ground and he feels flustered and it feels weird being so high up. He doesn't like it. It makes him uncomfortable. Yeah. He's like someone who says, I never want to get on a plane because I, it just freaks me out if my feet aren't on the ground. I've got to have my feet on the ground. Yeah. He does not, he doesn't, uh, he feels very out of control. Okay. What would you like instead of being picked up? Okay. He's showing, if you could please buy a ramp, a really long one so it's not too steep and one that's not slippery. He needs a, 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 um, yeah, a slow incline, yeah, gradual incline. So it's not steep because that will be hard for him and he'll feel panicky. And also one with really good traction. Yeah. Okay. And it. It needs to be wide enough too, because if it's too narrow, that will make him uncomfortable as well. And he's saying, keep the receipt. Um, he's going to need to learn to feel comfortable using the ramp. Uh, and if the ramp is too hard for him, he's saying you could also get stairs um, that you just use to help me get in and out of the car, just doggy stairs. But again, they, they, they need to be wide, have good traction, not be too steep. 
This will help them feel more comfortable getting in and out of the vehicle, having having more control, feeling safer. He doesn't he, he feels anxious and doesn't feel safe the way that he's getting in and out right now being picked up. Yeah. Okay. I'm just going to ask Bodhi uh, how he feels when he's in the car. <laughs> huh. It feels like he likes being in the car because when I ask him, he shows a big smile on his face. We're going for an adventure, he says. Uh, we're going for an adventure. He loves being able to go with you and being included. Um, he says, I'm included in everything. I'm part of the family. Okay. Okay. Great. Thank you, Bodhi. <laughs> okay. Is there anything that you would like your family to know? Are you happy with the life that you have right now? <laughs> okay. Oh, he's so cute. Um, So the nursery rhyme, the cow jumped over the moon. He's showing himself jumping over the moon when I ask him if he's happy with his life. Uh, he's saying, I'm so happy I'm over the moon. And that's how he showed me, which is so cute. Bodhi jumping over the moon. He's over the moon, excited about his life. He says, I get so much love and affection. I And I love um, all of it. it he shows uh being on his back and and um tummy rub time is he's, he's calling it he loves all of the affection that he gets he's got a huge smile on his face and he loves just hanging out with you just being with you oh, <laughs> and he says i'm doing a pretty good job learning everything i Sometimes I struggle with self-control, but I do, I'm do. i doing my best and I'm getting better, he says. I'm getting better all the time. He feels so loved. He just feels so loved and he loves all of the outings that you go on together. He really, really enjoys them. He looks forward to them. Yeah, and he's saying, Goose told me all about them and all about the great life I was going to have. I've been so excited to come in and have this experience. It's wonderful. He, and he's just so excited about it. It's so cute. Okay. <laughs> uh, what life lessons have you come in to help your family with, Bodhi? Uh-huh. Okay. He says, being playful. That's what I've come in to help you with. Being playful. He's so funny. Uh, just not being so serious, he says. Life doesn't need to be so serious. We can have fun. And, and he shows <laughs> coming over and kind of nudging you if you're working and just going, it, come on, it's time to take a break. Let's have a break. Let's go do something fun for a little while, even if it's for 10 or 15 minutes, just playing with them. I'm teaching you to take more breaks rather than hunker down and just keep working. It's good to take more breaks because then you come back and you're regrounded and refreshed and then you can accomplish a lot more during the time that you're working. Yeah. Okay. Taking more breaks, practicing self-care. Yeah. And he's saying, Goose started that journey, and I'm just continuing it, but in a different way. Bringing a lot of uh, lightheartedness and fun and playfulness. Uh, okay. And also, um, I'm a lot more expressive emotionally. You don't have to guess what I'm thinking, uh, because I will tell you. If I'm feeling uncomfortable, I don't like something... Like with the brushing, I'm going to bite at the brush. I don't like that. Stop it. Stop it. Um, or if I don't want to get in the vehicle because I don't like being picked up, I show you. I'm not afraid to show you when I have an uncomfortable feeling. And 
aha, this is me demonstrating to you that part of having a human experience, part of your life lesson is to be more easy with yourself, give yourself more grace, more forgiveness. Um, it's okay to make mistakes. It's okay to, to not feel great all the time, to not feel peaceful and joyful all the time. That's okay. That's part of the learning to, to have an emotion that doesn't feel in alignment with your truth of joyfulness and peacefulness and groundedness and being alignment with your core self. Because when you have experiences of discomfort in any way, feeling frustrated or angry or disappointed or sad or stressed, that is your soul self trying to get your attention to let you know that you are out of balance and yes, you could make a different choice with what you're choosing to focus on uh, mentally, what you're thinking about, which is causing you to feel the way that you're feeling. Yes. Okay. And by not labeling your emotions as good or bad, but noticing them and stepping outside of them and observing with a broader perspective and saying, what is this lesson? What is the gift in feeling this discomfort? Oh, I realize I've been pushing myself too much today. And I didn't give myself permission to have enough breaks and I feel off balance. And I'm not in the best place to be handling this right now. So I'm going to take a break and come back to it tomorrow or later on today. Or it could be, well, I'm stressed out about something that I'm anticipating in the future and it hasn't even happened yet. So I'm giving my, my well-being away and letting a potential future situation control me right now. Well, I don't need to do that. What am I in control of? I'm in control of where I put my focus and my intention and my attention. And I'm going to choose to focus on something else that feels good. And I'm going to choose to believe that I, my thoughts create my reality. And I can choose to think positive, good thoughts about my future because I know how impactful my thoughts are on how I feel. And I know that my feelings radiate from me and affect every part of my day and also affect my future. And knowing this, I'm going to choose to think good thoughts that support my well-being and my happiness and support how I would like my future to be. So I'm going to take a couple of minutes and I'm going to imagine the best outcome for this situation until I can really feel it. I can feel it in the core of my being. I can feel it emotionally. I can feel it. I can see it. And now I'm expecting this future reality. Doesn't this feel good? What an amazing opportunity for me in noticing discomfort to bring my attention back to creating my own reality. <laughs> yeah. And <laughs> giving myself grace, taking ownership of my life, knowing that my emotions do not control me, 
that I can change how I feel in any given moment. Uh huh. And he's saying, I am helping you with this. And he's, especially for you, mom, he says, I'm helping you with this. When I come over and nudge you and, or want to try to get your attention to come play with me right now. Or if you're feeling any kind of discomfort emotionally, it feels like he comes over to try to help you get out of that state. He's not just asking you to play with him, even though he would love for you to play with him. He's trying to help you become aware of your thoughts and emotions, how it's causing you to feel to sh and helping you to notice it so that you can process as he's just explained to feel differently. And he's doing that by beginning with let's just play because when you're playing with me, mom, and you're, you're completely focused and present with me, you can't worry about anything because you're in the moment playing with me. And he is here to bring joy. He's here to bring, bring playfulness. He's here to bring awareness. He's here to teach you that it's okay to be an emotional being. Our, our emotions are our guidance system, helping us become more and more and more in alignment with who we truly are and, and our highest potential. And he says, I see it in both of you. I see your highest potential. And I will always, always continue to guide you there. That is my job. That is my sole contract for you, especially for you, mom, for both of you, but especially you, mom. Uh, in this lifetime, practicing self-care, practicing the I am energy. Okay. <laughs> Is there anything else that you would like to share right now? Okay. Just going to glance at the questions real quick. Okay. Do you feel like you've, you have gotten everything off your chest, Bodhi? Everything that was in your heart that you wanted to share? And he's nodding with a big smile on his face. Yes, yes. I got all the important things out. And I, I, I and he's very, he's patting himself on the back. He's, I'm really proud of myself. I did a good job. And Goose has been helping me. He's been helping me. And I've been preparing for this. And he's just giving you the, both the biggest, he's calling his hug squeezes. It's so cute. He's saying, I'm giving you the biggest squeeze. I love you so much. And he's saying, thank you for giving me a voice today and allowing me to share what it is I came to help you with. And I'm so excited to bring more playfulness and joy and more awareness and more beautiful manifestations into your life. And thank you for my beautiful life with you, he says. Can't wait for the next adventure. And he's winking at me. He says, we're... We're going to have lots of fun, fun trips, fun things that we're doing. Yeah, he's so excited. He's so very excited. He's just, what a ham. And with the biggest heart and the biggest smile. Okay, I'm just going to thank Bodhi. Thank you, Bodhi, for sharing your beautiful messages. <laughs> So that your family can better understand you, how you're trying to help them, and what your sole purpose is in this lifetime, and how to help give you your best life. <laughs> he's waving goodbye. He's like, Bye. He's off. Off. He's got. Th off. He's got things to do. <laughs> I hope that you've enjoyed listening. Fluent and Canine will be back. Until next time. <laughs>